What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. Can you believe it? I have made almost 150 videos on YouTube. It's mind bottling. Did you just say mind bottling? Yeah, mind bottling. You know, when things are so crazy, it gets your thoughts all trapped like in a bottle. But one video stands alone as my most viewed, my most popular, my most subscribed to, yet my most hated video on YouTube, which is, can you do fine woodworking from a two by four? Oh man, the comments got so bad, I had to actually turn off the comment section of the video. So what made so many people so angry about it? Well, I went through the comments to try to figure it out. And really what it boiled down to was a lot of people could not see the two by four from the box. Since the box was made from a two by four, they assumed it was all two by four quality. So let's do a case study today. Let's build two boxes identical in every way. One made from hardwood, one made from construction lumber, and let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. I found some construction lumber in the corner of my shop. It's been there for a long time, so I know it is super dry. Now, prices vary depending on where you live at, but based off my area, I figure I will probably use about $5 worth of material to build the box. For the other box, I'm gonna build it out of walnut. So I grabbed a walnut board that was in my shop. Now, again, prices vary depending on where you're at. It cost me about $8 a board foot for walnut. So depending on how much lumber I use, I will probably spend about $15 in material to make this box. This is just a rough estimate of materials I'm gonna need to make the boxes based off my experience in making them. So this video is not supposed to be a tutorial on how you should run your woodworking business. That's a personal thing. The one thing I wanna keep in mind is I want my boxes to be built exactly the same. So I am going to mill down some lumber so I can build the outside carcasses of those boxes. I'm gonna do all of that at the same time. all my pieces cut out so now it's time for the joinery. I'm going to go with box joints because well I think they look kind of classy so I've got my sled here I've got a taller auxiliary fence so I have plenty of space for my work piece to fit onto and I put a ripping blade in my saw. Now if you want to know exactly how to do this step by step I already have a video on it so you can check that out. I go over the whole process and it requires no measuring. The box joints look good, so now I gotta work on the tops and the bottoms. Now, usually whenever I'm cutting grooves for that, I'll use the table saw and just run it across the blade. But if I did that, there would be little notches cut out here on the ends of the fingers, and I don't wanna see those. So instead, I'm gonna go over to the router table and do a plunge cut, and that will prevent it so we don't have those cutouts. After I made the box bottoms, I dry assembled them in. They look really good, so now I know I can glue them up. So while the glue is drying on this, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the lids for each one of them. All right, nice and square. The lid slides in really nicely, but I need something to put my finger on so I could pull it in and out really easily. So what I decided to do was to mill down some wood so it's the same thickness as the perimeter of my box. So I just took it over to the bandsaw, cut a piece down, did some sanding, and then I cut it to length and width at the table saw. So now whenever that piece fits in there, it all looks seamless. So it looks really good. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this into place. I'm gonna use the old wood glue, CA glue trick. You use some wood glue for the strength, put a couple drops of CA glue, basically to serve as a clamp. Once all that's glued up, then I gotta do a whole bunch of sanding. I sanded both the boxes down to 180 grit, rounded over all the edges, and they look fantastic. So now's the really exciting part, which is applying finish. When it comes to finishes, I tend to like to keep it simple if I can, so I'm just gonna go with a hard wax finish. Comparison time. We have two boxes that are built exactly the same, the same amount of time, the same amount of tension went into them. The only difference is one is made from construction lumber, one is made from walnut. Based on my experience of selling boxes, I think most people are gonna to gravitate towards the walnut box because, well, they like that walnutty look. At the same time though, this is a fantastic box. Now, with the design of this, I think you could do some really cool engravings, some personalization on this. And let's say that you do all of that and then you list it for sale for $50 for easy math purposes, obviously. Well, based off the comments I received on the last video on this topic, there were a lot of people who said they would not pay $5 for this one. And well, is that really fair, $5? If you look at it, everything is exactly the same with the exception of maybe $10 worth of material in the one compared to the other. Would it also be fair if we said this was a $5 box and this was a $50 box. I don't think so. I also said in that last video, I could probably make 200 to $250 worth of boxes from the construction lumber that I was using. Well, I took those two boxes I made, I listed them for sale. I sold them to complete strangers for $30 each. So that would put me right in the ballpark of what I said in the video. At the same time, I think I would have sold them faster if they would have been made out of walnut instead of pine. And if you're rushing to the comments to say, well, I have to have $10,000 worth of machinery to make these, you're missing the point. That's not really what we're talking about here. What's our takeaway from this comparison? Well, my personal takeaway is, if you want to hone your skills as a woodworker, but at the same time, you want to impress others with what you made, if you got a few extra bucks, spend money on good materials because a lot of people cannot see the book past the cover. At the same time though, don't let that deter you if you don't have those few extra dollars because I am proud of the box that I made and I'd be happy to have this at my house. And there's a lot of people out there who can see the craftsmanship you put into it beyond the wood species. What's really important is that we all get into our shops, try to make something cool and try to improve our skills. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.